All right, I'm back. Let's talk some more. Because I've recently found that me talking about um, my issues, first of all, gives me something to refer people to when they will not leave me alone about what's wrong with me. Second of all, it makes me feel just a little bit better. Um, like I said, I've been going, this is day, what, six of an anxiety attack. One single anxiety attack. Girl, get out of the road. One single anxiety attack I've been having for six full days, but it got a little better after I made yesterday's video. So, today's video, K-Lane's Personal Dramas Part 3, I suppose it will be uh, called. I've been reflecting because, again, Mercury is in retrograde, and that's what you do when Mercury is in retrograde. If you are in tuned and aligned with, you know, the planets and the stars, as I seem to be. And people, another, just let me just go ahead, and because people really love to say to me that, oh, you're just trying to find a way to uh, not represent the Lord by talking about the stars and the planets and blah, 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 and we're Christians over here. Well, girl, I talk about God all day, every day. I talk about Jesus all the time. I also talk about the stars and planets because God created the stars and planets. Girl, what are you trying to, what are you asking me to talk about? He want me to talk about God only? Not his creations, not just God? Like, okay, some of y'all do live your life talking about just God only, not how wonderful he made the earth, not how beautiful the trees are, not the universe, the stars, the moon. Okay, that's you. But I believe that God created the stars, the moon, the alignments, um, it is 100% fact that the moon controls the earth as far as uh, the oceans, the waves, the blah, 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 which in turn controls a bunch of other stuff that makes us live. Like, that's already, we already know that. Um, I feel like God did that. So when I'm talking about the moon and the stars and Mercury and retrograde and the alignments and this, that, and the other, I'm not taking anything away from my Lord and Savior. I'm not. I'm just simply stating what I know he made. I can't be bothered with you extra deep saints talking about we don't we don't recognize the alignment and we don't recognize that Mercury is in retro. How you don't recognize the planet going backwards? How you don't recognize it's doing it? You just don't recognize it? Like, it just y'all get on my nerves with that. Y'all really do. You, you worry me with that. But anyway, moving forward. I am someone who by nature is in tune. I'm in tuned to energies. I talked about this yesterday, auras and all of that. I'm also, for some reason, in tune with alignments. When Mercury is in retrograde, my life is literal hell, airtime. When when the girl goes backwards, so does my life. So it's just it's not something that I'm willing upon myself. It's just how it is. Mercury goes backwards. Kayla goes backwards too. It's it's new. It's not news. So anyway, girl. So I'm in tune. I'm you know doing my thing. I'm flashing back and all the stuff I do during retrograde, which causes me great distress. And um, I started thinking about when I was younger. I had to be five, six, seven, eight, you know, in, in that range. And I'm thinking about all the times when I was younger that people just did not want to be bothered with me and, and how it has carried over, you know, 18 years later, I'm, you know, early 20s and the doll just still people still don't want to be bothered with me but it's not a matter now it's not a matter of oh I don't want to be bothered with her I, I have found that people love to say they know me people love to say oh yeah girl we go way back I've known her for decades we yes honey we go back but don't call me don't text me are generally not my friend they just love to say they're my friend to other people everybody that I come across and people are like oh I, I met your friend the other day and I say which one and they say who it is it's almost always going to be somebody who don't talk to me, don't call me, don't see about me. They just say they're my friend. And they tell other people that because I'm popping, but I'm popping in a weird way. I'm somebody that everybody wants to know, but nobody wants to be friend. Nobody wants to actually get to know me. They just want to say they know me. And that's weird to me because I don't do nothing. I don't do nothing. If there's no reason for me to be popping at this point, at this stage of my development. I don't do anything. I'm funny. Yes, I'm pretty sometimes. But for people to always be like, oh, yeah, I know her, girl. We go way back and use my name as some sort of a credential. But then we not really friends. It's draining. It's so draining. Another thing that always has bothered me. Let me go on back to, to me being five, six, seven, eight. I remember, and I keep having these flashbacks. I keep remembering. Um... 
being a young girl, you know, playing as five-year-olds do, five, six, seven, I was energetic. I was a very energetic child. And if you ain't know me back then, it's probably hard for you to uh, imagine me bouncing off the walls. But I was just naturally so full of life. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what for. But I was just a very uh, zesty, zealous young lady in my day. And apparently that was off-putting for people. It, I, okay, I don't know. But people hated it. And I remember being really little and watching people see me, recognize that it's me, and then turn around and walk away. Like, walk the opposite direction. Oh, I don't want to be bothered with her today. That caused some sort of something in me. It killed my zealousness. It killed my, my lust for life. And now I'm here, I don't care about nothing, and I don't want to be bothered with anything. And everybody was like, it's like, well, what happened? You used to be in all of this and good times. These are the good times. Leave your cares behind. And I don't. I, I, I don't care nothing about nothing. A lot of that is because I was constantly told, sit down, be quiet, don't stop, quick. Don't enjoy stuff. Be, stop laughing so loud. You know, turn, turn the TV down. And I understand that, you know, Adults are aggravated because they got adult things going on. Um, but a lot of who I was as a person was crushed as a child. And now I'm an adult, and I don't, I don't have any of the things I had as a child. You know, all the happiness, the carefree, you know, happy-go-lucky, she's gone. And she's probably not going to come back because she's been gone. Let me see. She really dissipated. Like, the girl left at about, I would, I, I, I say I was 10. So she's been gone a good 13 years with no sign of return, like no sign. Um, and that's fine with me. I don't have to be happy-go-lucky and this and that and, and la la la. But what I do want is people to stop saying, well, what happened? You used to be, and something killed it, and something squashed it. When you know good and well was squashed and killed, my happy-go-lucky, it was you. What are you talking about? It was you. And I'm not talking about a specific person at the moment. I'm not. But I'm saying, all the, I, again, I've always been in tune with auras and, and energies and all that. All the energy uh, that y'all had towards me, all the auras, people lying on me all my life, <laughs> you know, people hating me. From the moment I walked into a school, um, kindergarten, the teacher hated me. First grade, the teacher was cool. Second grade, the teacher really didn't feel me like that. Third grade, the teacher hated me. Fourth grade, she was all right. Fifth grade, the teacher hated me. Sixth grade, the teacher couldn't, I mean, she wanted to kill me, which is, you know, fine. I, I would have taken death that, at that period myself. Uh, seventh grade, I started, you know, kind of being cool, whatever. Teachers, you know, some teachers liked me, some teachers didn't. That's when we started having more than one teacher or whatever. Um, eighth grade, I don't even really remember it. I just know this 18 wheeler needs to do something else and not be cutting me off like this because you're an 18 wheeler and you think you can. I don't have time for it because I'm one of those rare people that doesn't care that you're an 18 wheeler. Um, and you, I don't know what your problem is, but you need to get it together. Um, what am I talking about? Okay, so ninth grade, a couple teachers like me, a couple teachers didn't, blah, blah, who cares? Tenth grade, the teacher hated me uh, to the point where she lied on me, had me put out to school. I had to go to a whole nother school. It was the worst experience of my life. I get there and people who are supposed to be my brother, I, can't, I don't fool with this nigga, no, no I just, we, whatever. But he was supposed to be my brother. Um, lying on me, telling folks I'm a, tell, telling people I'm just going to beat them up for no reason. I'm a witch. I practice witchcraft and all this other, you know, brouhaha girl. I can't be bothered. Um, and that followed me on to 12th grade because people still don't feel the need to try to get to know somebody. Um, so honestly, from kindergarten to 12th grade, you know, it was a bunch of bull teachers hated me, blah, blah, blah. Students in turn hated me because I don't know, girl, something's wrong with me. Apparently, I just don't click. I don't vibe, which is it is, it is what it is, whatever. The problem I have is that people love to give off the illusion to other people that they love me, that we're good, good girlfriends, uh, that we hang out, but that's just simply not the truth. And then those that I were, I was close with, that I, you know, was good, good girlfriends with, that I did hang out with, love to just drop me all of a sudden. We hang out for years. We hang out for a decade. We hang out for five years. We hang out for two years straight. Every weekend we doing something. We going out to eat. We just that, you know, and the third and the other. Um, and then all of a sudden you want to be bothered with me just out of nowhere. And that is annoying. It doesn't necessarily hurt my feelings, but it's annoying because you could at the very least say, hey, sis, I don't feel like being bothered with you no more, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. But instead, you just dip. 
and I'm not the type of hoe that's going to chase a hoe. I don't chase nobody. That's just not my thing. So if you stop calling, if you stop responding to my texts or whatever, then that's just that. And we're not friends. It's canceled. And you can continue to tell people we're friends, but we're not. We're just simply, simply not. And I'm sorry that you think we're friends, um, but we're not. It's just really draining um, being myself. Um, it's draining driving behind this 18-wheeler, especially because it's carrying gas. You know how to gas 18-wheelers. They got to be extra careful. Girl, if, just get across the road. Just get on across the road. If you flip over and we all die, that'll be fine. It, it was our time. When Jesus said yes, nobody can say no. Anyway, girl, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just venting. Uh, just, It's just aggravating. It's aggravating. Uh, and I'm sorry if y'all hear a lot of background noise. I feel like I'm hearing a lot. Um, and I feel like if I hear a lot, y'all hear a lot. I do apologize. I don't know. I don't know what this young lady is doing over here on the side of the highway, the freeway, but uh, that's not my business. Anyway, child, I just, I'm just drained. Just existing and being alive is such a chore. Um, especially when people beat me up for existing and being alive. It's like people just for the mere fact that you are alive Kayla we hate you and want you to not be alive but we when you say you don't want to be alive we will fight you because how dare you say that but we hate you and uh we're gonna drag you for blood we're gonna drag you for filth uh but don't you say it that's what it feels like that's what waking up every oh I know her hey girl waking up every day uh honestly feels like you know the world is telling me girl we're sick of you we're tired. We don't need you on this planet. You, your existence does not mean anything to us. You have impacted no one, uh, and there's no reason for you to be here. But then when I say it aloud, the girls do nothing but attack me. How very dare you say you don't want to be on this earth? How dare you say you don't have friends even though I don't call you, text you, or check on you when I know you're going through emotional distress? How very dare you say that your family does not love you or care about you when you mind your business and we read you and drag you and scalp you? All of that. How dare you say the things that are true? How dare you? That's what it feels like all day. All day, every day. It just truly feels like... Uh, the world hates for me to be alive. And then when I say, oh, the world hates for me to be alive, uh, then the world is like, girl, don't spill our tea. It's just simply what it feels like. But whatever, girl, I don't even know what I'm talking about. This is, you know, the rambling portion of my channel. I'm going to see what the girls have on a rambling report, uh, have on, you know, the web. So I can do a rambling report right quick and I, I'll call y'all later.